Hello and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Brandon Dennis. This is the show where we review the week's news in the world of quantum computing and its impacts on cybersecurity, AI, and more. And with us to discuss it is co-founder and CSO at QSecure, Dr. Garrison Buss. Welcome, Garrison. Thanks, Brandon. Happy to be here. Right. In today's episodes, we'll cover a new quantum competition from Google, uh, preparing for post-quantum cyber threats, and the U.S. Navy's recent quantum testing. Let's get started. Uh, first article out of NewScientist.com. Google and XPRIZE are joining forces for an exciting $5 million competition to uncover practical uses of quantum computers. This could be a game changer that brings theoretical speedups into everyday applications. The challenge is all about sparking innovation, and researchers are invited to craft new quantum algorithms for societal good or use existing ones in uncharted territory. Garrison, I'd love your thoughts. How do you think the integration of practical quantum computing applications could impact everyday technology in society? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really exciting um, that quantum information sciences and, and quantum computing are really starting to be something that um, are coming into the forefront of the conversation for cutting edge technology, and especially with this uh, X Prize award. Um, I also think it's telling, right, uh, that we're looking through the looking for these breakthrough applications still, right? Everyone um, who's a little, at least a little bit in the quantum community knows the the promise of quantum computing and how powerful, right, it's slated to be. Um, and it's it's juxtaposed with this idea that we, you know, we're putting forward a competition, right, to to look through. Well, hey, what's the killer app for these things? Um, and and I think you know. We already know a couple, right? Um, and because we focus on cybersecurity, obviously, Shor's algorithm, the ability to factor large numbers is something that's well known uh, that quantum computers will be good at. Um, and we're looking to extend that capability, as you were mentioning, right into the into the realm of um, helping businesses right make money and, and improve um, their their outcomes by looking at right really complex problems that quantum computers can solve. So. Um, these are problems like optimization, right? So if you're if you're familiar with the travel wing salesman problem, that's uh, something that quantum computers are able to uh, very quickly deduce, right? The, the optimal path, as well as risk analysis, right? So if you're looking at things that have uh, multiple overlapping variables, right? That's uh, what a lot of folks are, are foreseeing for quantum computing uh, to be able to tackle, right? It's these really complicated things because we've seen breakthroughs already in material sciences, um, and some optimization problems. And I think folks are, are continuing to push on those, but to really bring it into the realm of generally useful quantum computing, right? Um, I think we're going to see, again, most of that happening for optimization risk analysis, but maybe XPRIZE will surprise us um, and give us something that we, we didn't even uh, anticipate. That's great, Garrison. Thank you. Quick reminder, everyone, you can find the links to all the articles mentioned today in the show notes. If you want weekly quantum updates, subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcasts on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Next up, we have a report from SDX Central. The article is titled, Assessing the Post-Quantum Threat, Three Tips to Be Ready. Uh, this article talks about how the looming post-quantum threat urges organizations to adopt post-quantum cryptographic algorithms and engage in proactive measures to ensure data security. Garrison, this one is your specialty. In your opinion, are <laughs> industries and governments prepared to transition to post-quantum cryptography? Yeah, um, I think it, it's it's interesting sitting at the the nexus of everything as the strategy officer for QSecure. I would say, by and large, right, uh, folks in in enterprise and in government are not uh, yet ready to undertake the, this frankly massive endeavor, right? And and if you even look at uh, the self reporting from uh, these folks, it it's uh, overly apparent that that we are unprepared. Uh, there was a study by Moody's Analytics, I think last year, that uh, surveyed a bunch of, uh, you know, FSI sector folks, and they were all saying, you know, 80% plus, hey, we're unprepared for for this transition to post-quantum cryptography. And, you know, that that's, um, 
that's concerning, especially when paired with the second question, which is, uh, do you foresee the need to actually make this transaction in the next uh, two to five years? And they, again, at an over 80% level said, yes, we foresee the need. And now, right, that's the next one to four years. And building on that, I think um, folks who have, have been um, around for a couple of these cryptographic upgrades, right? So uh, if we're talking, you know, protocol-based, right, TLS 1.2 to 1.3, or, or even uh, just general networking, right, IPv4 to V6, it takes a really long time to unstick folks from their current infrastructure and move them right onto something new. And in this case, right, it's not just, um, you know, a, a certain, you know, algorithm that is being compromised. It's any asymmetric cryptography today will need to be upgraded or augmented to um, get uh, rid of this threat or at least stem the tide for this threat. And even further, right, the, the complex with the fact that you can steal this data today um, and then just sit on it until a later point in time, which you have a, a relevant uh, quantum computer or uh, technique to open up that data and expose it, right? If that data has a really long shelf life, um, it could still be valuable, right? Five, 10 years in the future, right? These are, these are the, the kinds of things that we think about all of the time. And I think for, for enterprises, um, they, they see this threat as, you know, far off, I'm going to wait for standardization, um, you know, kind of at the peril of, thinking about, okay, well, if my data was stolen today and decrypted later, what would that mean? And should I be acting now uh, to prepare, right, to be able to flip the switch uh, when there's standards, right, if that's uh, what needs to be waited for, or um, even in advance of the standards, right, to, to protect yourselves today with something that can augment what you have in terms of your current encryption, uh, such that you don't need to, um, again, disrupt what you have, right, take that out, but really uh, kind of ensure that you have an additional layer of encryption uh, that you can use to protect against this quantum threat. Very well said. Thanks, Garrison. Mm -hmm. Let's wrap it up here. Our final article comes from Defense One. Uh, I see the Navy is trying to use quantum computers to task spy satellites. Uh, the article talks about how the Navy is experimenting with technologies to solve complex problems. and. You know, we've made some great strides in the public sector and the private sector as well. Um, it's very well known that other countries are outpacing the U.S. on funding quantum. I'd really like to get your thoughts on that, Garrison. Yeah, I mean, U.S. Um, ha definitely has a number of initiatives, right? We have, we've dedicated billions to quantum information sciences, QIS. Um, and, and that's broadly, right, um, everything that, that basically has quantum in the name, right, quantum sensing, uh, quantum computing, and quantum networking, right, and inclusive of uh, post-quantum security, which is what we do. And, um, you know, it sounds like a lot of money, right, 1.2 1, 1. billion um, it was allocated, and, and it is, but at the same time, right, we are also being outpaced. And so um, part of that comes from, you know, here in the U.S., we have uh, kind of two ways, right, of bringing things to, to market. Uh, one, right, is through federal investment, right? This comes in the form of grants, kind of like what's been uh, already dedicated, but also, right, uh, procurement from the government. So too, right, we have investment from uh, the private sector, right? We have a lot of great VC investment um, as well as, you know, other forms of investment that can help to bring these technologies uh, to market more quickly. And I think that really um, being able to synergize those two things together, right, and helping um, to, to bring, right, the best of the private sector to the government and, and vice versa is something that the government has really been taking um, a more active role in, right? So if you look at the SBIR uh, program, that allows the government to more readily interact with smaller companies such as ourselves, and indeed we've won many of these awards, um, so that they can get access to our technology um, without needing to right, in, um, encounter and take on a lot of the compliance and um, other considerations that they typically need to engage in when they're going with other vendors. And so I think, um, you know, from my perspective, there's, there's a lot already being done. Um, we certainly should be doing more. Right. I think the, the, there's an acknowledgement that this really is a breakthrough technology, even if we don't quite know the breakthrough applications yet. Um, but 
there, there is, um, you know, a, a, an increasing need, right, for us to get in front of this thing, um, right, as all of these different qubit technologies are coming out, like if you look at IBM um, uh, on qubit, you know, there, there are many, many new types of computers, um, mostly coming from the U.S. and a couple of other places in the world as well, at least ones that, are, that we publicly know about. And we're doing a really great job at seeding right, all of these different technologies within the quantum ecosystem um, by virtue of, again, private or public investment, but making sure that these things uh, don't just peter out, right? that we actually are able to then execute on the promise of these, um, these nascent investments, these nascent technologies, is something that we, uh, we really have to pay attention to and dedicate even more funding to in the future. Absolutely. Well, folks, that's all for today's show. I'm your host, Brandon Dennis, and with us this week has been Dr. Garrison Buss. Thanks, Garrison. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brandon. Great. We'll see you next week on Last Week in Quantum.